Roger, Roger. I was muted. Sorry. <laughs> How are you? Hey, Roger. Roger, hey. we you may have suspected, but I have called you here under false pretenses. Uh, we are not here to talk about uh, to do a debrief of the cherubs. We are actually here to celebrate another amazing milestone in a year of milestones at Medill, your 50th anniversary of working for Medill and working with the Cherubs program. Congratulations. What a surprise. Yay. Oh my goodness. There are some members of the Medill faculty who for generations of students have been the heart and soul of the school. I think about legendary people like Dick Haney and Jack Scissors and Don Schultz and Elizabeth Yamashita and Peter Jacoby and your mentor in mind, the great Ben Baldwin. Um, but you, my friend, are certainly one of those towering, emblematic Medill faculty mm -hmm. members. Wow. Um, I, I think for 50 years, you've been a dedicated teacher, mentor, administrator, and the most dependable and reliable font of knowledge about the institution that we have. <laughs> and while I'm considered one of the grizzled old veterans of Medill, next to you, I'm a mere toddler in terms of the number of years <laughs> of service uh, I've had. Well, I think you're in at least the youngster stage from toddler. <laughs> so thank you. But you're, you've, you've gone up. So, well, and you mentioned Dick Haney. You know, Dick was a chair of 1940. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I know if we'd asked you about celebrating this milestone, you would have balked and probably said no. So instead of asking for You're forgiveness, right. we decided to beg your permission. Uh, and, 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 and we asked you for permission. We decided to beg your forgiveness, I should say. Um, well, and well. as you can see, there are a lot of people here who wanted the uh, opportunity to tell you how much you mean to us and how well. much you mean to Medill. So sit back and grin I, and bear it if you can. Uh, I, I'm going to turn things over to Mary Lou. If I knew if I knew this, I'd have dressed up today. She <laughs> wins. <laughs> yeah, I haven't exactly dressed up either. So, so you're in good company. <laughs> Wait, I think it's totally fine, Roger. So um, I'm gonna kick it off with um, a couple of toasts. This is not a roast, um, but a toast. Um, <laughs> but we, we definitely want not yet. Somebody said, but. Um, uh, I'd like to kick it off by saying that I've said for many years and to many people that when I look back on my life, that everything good always leads back to journalism tariffs. And, um, you know, I stepped through the, the doors of Fisk Hall for the first time in 1986 as a cherub. And um, on that very first night of the program, you stood in front of 93 of us and shared a Confucius quote that would change my life forever. Um, and I think a lot of people here may know the quote because I've been quoting it for a long time too, um, but it is choose a job you love and you will never work a day. And, um, uh, you know, I grew up in an immigrant family with a tiger mom and we talked a lot about working hard. Um, we never talked about choosing love. That was just not what we did. Uh, but because of you, Roger, I have been choosing love every day since 1986. And I promise you, I have never worked a day. <laughs> um, well. I, I'm not done yet. You get to sit and be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I see Melissa. Um, but, you know, uh, I want you to know that because of you, Roger, um, I think I'm the luckiest girl in the world. Um, and I'm forever grateful for you because you shared the secret to life with me and with 50 other classes of cherub alums. Um, and because of the life lessons that you shared with us and the incredible love that you've given to the program and to Medill, we're all um, so much better and so much luckier because of it. So thank you so much and congratulations well, on achieving 50 years. Well, well, thank you, Mary Lou. That was very touching. And I don't know if everybody on the call realizes this, but Mary Lou has been a key part of the program now for, well, going on two decades, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so as our as our head instructor for the last several years. So uh, so so much of the success of the program is really rest on Mary Lou's shoulders. And she's been uh, just an invaluable part. So you know, we, I, all of us owe you so much, Mary Lou, for your involvement, so. It's all because of you, so thank you, Roger. Well, well, well um, thank you, Mary Lou. I, I have to ask, are you still in California? I, I came back to California uh, last, late last night. Okay. So um, well, I, I'm, 
I'm here for a week. You probably recognize I my recognize background. I recognize the background. Yeah. And, uh, I'm going to pack up my house and get back out to Honolulu in, yeah. in seven days. Okay. Um, okay. Roger, we're, we're kind of not done, though. I, I want to introduce a row of speakers, um, hopefully representing every single decade that you've been a teacher. Oh, um, oh. Beginning with uh, Howard Reich. And for everybody who doesn't know Howard, Howard was a chair in 1971 um, and a member of Roger's first class of journalism cherubs. Howard graduated from Northwestern in 1977 as a piano performance major, combining his love of music and journalism in a story career. Howard is an Emmy award-winning filmmaker. He joined the Tr Chicago Tribune in 1978, covering music and the arts where he served as the jazz critic and classical music and opera critic. He's written seven, uh, six books, excuse me, including Prisoner of Her Past, which inspired the documentary film and The Art of Inventing Hope, which was based on his conversations with Elie Wiesel. Um, his stories about pianist Norman Malone have led to the new film For the Left Hand. And Howard takes the time every summer to share his experiences with the chair. And just this year, we were um, lucky enough to watch a sneak preview of For the Left Hand. So I hope everybody gets to see it. But um, I'm going to turn this over to Howard to say a few words. Thank and, you so and, much. Oh, yeah. And, and Howard, aren't you glad we don't have to go back to the 1960s for this? <laughs> this 50 years is plenty. No. Um, I, I just want to say, Roger, my life in journalism really began in the summer of 71, when I was a chair of your first summer and, and heading at my summer there. Um, everything was new to me at that point. I was this kid from Skokie who had a lot to learn. And thanks to you and the chair program, I got to go to Ravinia for the first time. I covered real stories for the first time, including the Evanston 4th of July parade, of course. Visited a TV newsroom for the first time, NBC. Visited a newspaper the first time for the first time, Chicago Daily News. And I feel that through it all, you treated us not so much as students, but as fellow journalists. And that made all the difference. And I came out of the chair program convinced that I had to study at Northwestern. I had to study at Medill. So of course, a few weeks before my freshman year, I made a sharp left turn, decided to be a piano major instead. But uh, the combination of my musical studies and the cherub, uh, cherub summer led me to realize I should spend my life writing about music and the arts. And with in a few years, I was freelancing for the Daily News, then the Chicago Tribune, where I spent my, my whole career, all that wonderful time. Um, and in, uh, in recent years, I've had the privilege of speaking to, those, to the cherubs every summer. And I always tell them one thing. I said, you will never forget this summer. This is one of the great experiences of your life. You'll always remember it, just as I have always remembered it. And I owe that uh, to you, Roger. So Roger, thank you so much for making that possible for me and for so many generations of students. A million thanks. Thank you. Well, well, thank you, Howard. And you know, we're getting the evaluations in from this summer's program, and they were all blown away by the session you did a few weeks ago. So thank you. Thank um, you. But you, and you know, my memory is in 1971, we did have a piano in the main lounge of the dorm we were in. So maybe that had more of an impact than you knew. <laughs> well, at least half the impact, but thank you so much. I'd like to introduce the next speaker, Brett Began. Brett um, has achieved what we in the cherub world call the trifecta of cherubdom. And he was a cherub in 1993. He was a community associate in 1995. And he has been an instructor, either full-time or guest for 20 years. Um, at Northwestern, Brett worked at The Daily for four years. He worked at Newsday, The Village Voice, and Newsweek. He graduated from the Dill in 1998 and then worked at Newsweek for 13 years. He rose from researcher to writer to national affairs editor. Brett joined Bloomberg Business Week in 2016, where he is a senior editor. And this summer, we were lucky enough to have Brett as a full-time instructor with the online chair program. And Brett was our graduation speaker just last Friday. That's that's right, Roger. L long time no Zoom. Uh, been... <laughs> I know. Gee, it's it's been a whole, you know, six days now. I know. I I I couldn't take it, so I just thought I had to had to hop back on Zoom with you. Um, so I just, Roger, I just want to say congratulations, and like Howard, I, I really wanted to say thank you. You know, um, I had no idea when I applied to be a chair about drastically that decision was really going to alter 
the trajectory of my life. And you don't know that a different world really exists until someone opens that door for you. And that's what you did um, in 1993 by letting me into the program. And you've literally done that for thousands of other people. Um, and it's not an exaggeration to say that you played um, you know, not only a central role in my life, but my career and, and my happiness, you know, being an instructor in the program uh, and getting to come back to Medill every summer uh, has really been, you know, truly the, the honor of my life. Um, it's been the most fun and most rewarding part of my year now for two decades. Uh, though, you know, I think you and I would probably not want to relive the unbearably hot summer of 1995, where we surely set a record for taking cherubs with heat stroke to Evanston Hospital. Um, yeah, you know, weird. Roger, through, through the program, I, I have uh, been fortunate enough to meet some of the most important people in my life. Uh, and again, I really owe that to you. And it, it's hard for me at this point to imagine, uh, you know, not having stayed up past midnight grading trend stories uh, or demonstrating proper handshake technique uh, with you and Cynthia during our interviewing class or debating, I guess is the right word, whether a fourth dessert at Hinman seems <laughs> reasonable. Um, so truly, uh, Roger, thank you so much. Um, and thank you to Dean Whitaker and Mary Lou for asking me to speak today. And, and here's to, to 50 more years. Well, well, thank you, Brett. You know, your, your work in the program has really set the standard for all of us. I mean, you're, you're a, so approachable and have a, such a wonderful sense of humor and the students just love working with you. And, uh, and, and Brett sometimes reminds me that in 1995, in this terribly hot summer, Brett was what we called our office manager, sort of the RA. And it was only one that year, it was just Brett. Now we have either three or four RAs. And Brett says, well, it took three people to replace me. So that's how good he is. <laughs> Thank you, Rod. Roger, I'd like to let Cynthia Wong say a few words. And for everyone, um, Cynthia Wong has had this very incredible career as a journalist covering the entertainment industry. She worked for People Magazine for 18 years as an entertainment writer, reporter, and editor. Um, Cynthia moved to Australia to work as a staff writer for Who, which is People's Australian sister magazine, and she later became features editor at TV Week magazine. She's currently freelancing and writing Survivor, 40 Seasons, the official CBS Collector's Edition, as well as editing several special issue publications distributed by Bauer Media USA. Um, Cynthia is a 1993 Medill graduate. She was a cherub in 1988 and John Kupetz was her instructor. Um, Cynthia has worked as a guest instructor or full-time instructor for more than 25 years. Cynthia? Hey, well, there's no bigger celebrity I know than Roger. So um, here's some celebrity facts about him that people may wanna know. Um, he knows all the words to Moon River and can sing it beautifully. He can, um, he raises beefsteak begonias. So anybody out there who wants some planting tips, you can go to Roger for that. He's an avid um, coin collector. Um, he can tell you on the spot if any of the coins you bring him are worth anything. I'll tell you now, probably not, but he'll give you the lowdown on them. Um, he's also a legendary volleyball champion, um, has pioneered that sport as far as a uh, staff versus student uh, participation goes. I don't and, like to brag. <laughs> and he also is uh, has an alchemy about him that places students with instructors, selects students for the chair program, and makes outcomes happen. Um, for all of us that are on this call, we are the result of something that you put together that is beyond us, but has led us in all the directions that we have gone in. And we could not have done it without your vision, your support, and that's why we're here. That's why I'm here. I was always into magazines. Um, there really wasn't that much about it in Cherubs, but when I came to you and said, you know what, I could come back every summer and maybe do something about magazines, you were open to it. And that has led into a new path for me of teaching on um, these past 25 years. It's something I 
cannot imagine has happened in my life, but it's a result of you. So if I were to write a profile about you, it would contain all these things and more. Thank you so much, Roger, for all that you've brought me and everyone here. Well, thank you, Cynthia, for those kind words. And, and I'm sure you win the prize today for speaking at the oddest hour for you. What is it, about 4 a.m. in Australia right now? Well, so, it's, it's 8 a.m. It's reasonable. Oh, oh eight. Oh, <laughs> we didn't get you up that early. So, but just like Brad and, and Mary Lou, uh, your, your uh, participation every year has just been an uh, invaluable part of the program and you keep coming back for more. I think, oh, that's a real trooper. So, and, and, and when we were before the pandemic coming back, coming to campus from Australia, which is like uh, uh, really going beyond the, the call of duty. So thank you so much. It's very, very nice of you to say that. Oh, thank you. I'd like to invite Aaron Aylworth to say a few words as well. Aaron was a chairman in 1998 and graduated from Medill in 2003. She is based in Chicago with the Wall Street Journal's Midwest Bureau, and she can often be found covering hurricanes, wildfires, and other disasters and traumas nationwide. She was part of the team named Pulitzer finalist for the journal's coverage of PG&E and the wildfires in California. And she was previously on the journal's energy team in Houston. Prior to the journal, Erin worked at the Boston Globe, the Orlando Sentinel, and the LA Times. Um, she's a lifelong member of the National Association of Hispanic Journalists, where she served four years on the national board. Erin um, was a first time cherub instructor this summer, finally. Um, and we're really hoping that there won't be any disasters next summer so that she'll be back on the teaching team in 2022. Erin? Yeah, that's for sure. Fingers crossed, guys. Um, I think like so many people on this call, I can safely say that there are few people, if any, who have had more influence on my journalism career than Roger Bailey. Uh, if my memory serves me right, it's a bit hazy, but my first conversation with Roger uh, was about financial aid that I'd received to help my single mom afford to send me to Cherubs. And I don't have to tell you all how foundational that summer was. It's lessons still ring in my ears years later, particularly if your mother says she loves you, check it out. Very good, mm -hmm. very good, very good. Roger later became my college advisor and helped shepherd me, a first-generation college student, through my four years at Northwestern. He never really stopped advising me, honestly, even if years passed between our conversations. Many of the many of the hurdles that I've encountered on the job, um, two questions could help me solve. What would Roger do? And what did Cherubs teach me? In fact, when the pandemic forced us into shutdown mode and I got assigned to go to the nearest college campus, I immediately messaged Roger and asked if he could do anything to help connect me with people at Northwestern. And he went above and beyond. He walked the campus with me that day making introductions and chatting with me about how the pandemic was going to reshape our world and how we had a huge role in chronicling those changes. I couldn't help but recognize that moment as a moment where I had come full circle. Reporting on a massive story for one of the country's largest newspapers with the help of the man who laid the building blocks for my career during a summer on Northwestern's campus. Roger, I can't thank you enough. Well, that's so nice of you to say, Aaron. I mean, it's been just a pleasure knowing you as I have over the years. And, um, and you know, this was your first year as a chair of instructor. Everybody thought it was like your 25th year as a chair of instructor. You fit in so well and you're just, you're just perfect in, in the role. Uh, so I, um, you know, I just can't thank you enough. And which reminds me, uh, a, a few weeks ago, one of our, this was right before the program began, a Cherub family visited campus. And, and I, you knew that and said, well, I'll come over and meet with them as well, because I met, the, met, met with them on campus. And you were talking to the, the Cherub-to-be. I was about 10 steps behind you talking to the father. And she said, he said, boy, is she an impressive journalist? And I said, I've only been trying about five years now to get her on the staff. And this year I succeeded. So. Finally, finally. Oh, I'm, so, I'm just as happy to be here as you are to have well, me, I think. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to 2022.
Um, Roger, I'd like to introduce um, Aaron Rogers next. Uh, Aaron is the Emmy Award winning anchor of Good Day Memphis in Tennessee. And yes, she did get her start as a journalism cherub in 2007. She was actually one of the first cherubs to ever video blog or vlog as we called it and to tell stories about the cherubs and their summer experiences at Northwestern using video. Um, Erin returned to Medill as a student in the accelerated master's program, earning both her BSJ and MSJ in four years. At Northwestern, she was president of her sorority, Delta Sigma Theta, president of NABJNU, and a reporter at NNN. Um, while at Medill, Erin interned at WSB TV in her hometown of Atlanta and MSNBC with Hardball with Chris Matthews and Rachel Maddow. She also did her journalism residency in Topeka, Kansas. And after graduating in 2012, she reported in Fort Wayne, Indiana and Greenville, South Carolina, and uh, before becoming a full-time anchor at, at WMAZ-TV in Macon, Georgia. Erin, I hope you're here. I'm here. Thank you so much, Mary Lou. And thank you, Roger. I feel like I'm going to sound like a broken record because you definitely changed my life. I can't believe it's been 14 years. Uh, my chair of class, when Mary Lou set this all up, we went digging blogs. Why 2007 is when blogs became popular. I feel kind of dated when I say that since it's so long now. But uh, yeah, those first chair of blogs were uh, really something special. So I'll have to send. Again, I think back 14 years ago and so life-changing that um, I vividly remember when my mom came to pick me up, I cried the entire way to the airport, the entire flight back. And I just thank you, Roger, because you gave me the most life-changing summer of my life. I um, just remember even my Why Northwestern essay was about when you brought in um, this project and we got to work with them a little bit during Cherubs and that really kind of put me on the path of what I've been doing as far as journalism kind of focusing on social justice issues. So that uh, summer really changed my life when I got to Medill. I don't think there was anyone who could brighten up my day than running into you in the hallway, popping by your office. I worked in Medill Career Services. Um, so every time you would come by, it just made completely turn my day around if I was having a bad day. And I, again, echo everyone. Thank you so, so much for what you've done in my life, for everyone on here, because because of you, I'm scrolling through and I see my old professors, my old chair of instructors, some of my best friends. on 50 years that's so amazing well Aaron so it's so good to see you and thank you so much and you know every time you said 14 years I thought could it possibly be 14 years <laughs> and you don't know you don't know how that makes me feel but but it is 14 years it's what it is and uh, I uh, you know I remember you working in the career services office and um, it was just, uh, it's, it's just wonderful to see you and, and uh, um, uh, just, it just, I'm so glad you can make the call. Thank you. Roger, um, I wanna reintroduce Allison Prang to you. She was a 2009 cherub um, and maybe our fire baton twirling cherub too, maybe our first and only. Allison actually graduated from Missouri where she put herself through school and worked as worked on student publications covering city, state, and national affairs. She also worked at um, investigative reporters and editors headquartered in Missouri. And before graduating, she worked at the St. Louis Beacon, the business desk of the Kansas City Star, Bloomberg News in New York, the Wall Street Journal, and the Indianapolis Star. And after graduating, Allison worked as a business reporter at the Post and Courier in Charleston, South Carolina, and American banker in New York. Um, she's currently at the Wall Street Journal, where she covers corporate breaking news. Allison? 
Hi, Roger and everyone. I hope you can hear me. Um, so I prepared a little thing and bear with me. Uh, to Roger, Cherub still to this day was one of the most amazing summers of my life. And every student who went through this program over the last 50 years owes that to you. Now I could give you all 29 year old Allison's perspective on Cherubs and how incredible it was, but I actually have a gem I found that I think is even better, which is 17 year old Allison's perspective on Cherubs. So this is my journal entry from day two of the program. And I would like to point out that it has nothing short of 14 exclamation points. Uh, so here goes. <laughs> John Cooper day should not be happy with that. <laughs> Oh, and he's on this call, God. Okay, well, <laughs> forgive me, John. Um, so day two, I love, love, love being a cherub, exclamation point. Today we had the dreaded all day story, but I thought it was such a blast, exclamation point. The instructors and CAs acted out the scenes and we had to keep updating our stories with really tight deadlines, exclamation point. When we turned our final copies in at 8.30 PM to our instructors, Joe Grimm asked how it was, and I said, it was so fun and I loved it, exclamation point. Mary Lou then called me back in and asked me my name and said I rocked, exclamation point. After all of my floor friends turned in their stories, we walked to Jamba Juice and raced back for check-in, but we were early, period, shocker. At 6 a.m., Annie and I woke up, she's on this call, to go running at the lake fill. Wow, exclamation point. That was one of the prettiest things I ever saw, exclamation point. All of the instructors are so cool, exclamation point. Roger Boy was really fun. He calls himself Roger Boyer. He is very into Froyo and the CAs are trying to get the machine back for him and Allison Hall, exclamation point. Allison, exclamation point, smiley face. The food is really good too. Today we're acting like real journalists, exclamation point. I loved the all day story. I love cherubs, exclamation point. I love NU, exclamation point. Go Wildcats, exclamation point. Now, while I did not in fact end up attending Northwestern, I know I got to experience one of the best things and one of the best people it has to offer. I just wanna say, Roger, you have shepherded a program that I would be thrilled to attend again 12 years later. I hope you know how many 17 year old aspiring journalists you've made such a profound impression on. This program is so, so lucky to have had such a passionate, fun and loving leader running it for so long. Thank you so much. Well, well, thank you, Allison. That's that's very touching. And, and you know, I think Roger Boyer, Boyer only lasted for one year. Uh, <laughs> it kind of flopped after that. <laughs> so now, now, Allison, there's something that you owe me. I don't know what if you that? remember this. Well. As I recall, when you were in the program, you did twirling. Yes. Twirled, and I think you, at one evening, you put on like a twirling demonstration with flaming twirls. But I, I missed that. And I, I talked to you the next day and I said, I'm really sorry I missed that. And she said, you said, well, I'll, I'll do one for you one of these days. Oh, so, no. I so do I owe hope, you this. Uh, so I hope you've kept your skills, uh, you know, a current and, and fresh because it's I'm like riding be... a bike <laughs> oh oh great well that's good to know because I'll be collecting so, good good I'm happy to uh, do a chair performance any summer so great I'll <laughs> we'll hold you to that so well it's so Thank good you. to see you Allison you too you too uh, Roger Tyler Pager uh Tyler was a a cherub in 2012 and at Medill he double majored in journalism and poli sci Tyler was the editor in chief of the Daily Northwestern, where he led a staff of 100 student journalists and wrote more than 230 stories. He worked at USA Today, Politico, and the Boston Globe and covered the Supreme Court, the pre presidential election, the White House Congress, national security, and even Guantanamo Bay. And then he graduated as valedictorian with a perfect GPA. Tyler went on to earn a master's degree from Oxford in comparative social policy. He won a national competition to travel with Nicholas Kristof of the New York Times to cover the Central African Republic. And later Tyler worked on the Metro desk at the New York Times as a James Reston reporting fellow. He covered a 2020 presidential campaign for Bloomberg News. And he recently joined the Washington Post as White House reporter, also, on the road, I think on vacation, but he's here to say a few words. Hello, um, sorry, I'm not gonna live up to that. And Mary Lou is correct. I'm currently biking through Iowa 
and I happen to stop in Stone City and I'm standing in front of this wood portrait of American Gothic, which I, I don't know how, you know, that, that turned out. We were uh, near the hometown, I think, of the painter. So uh, I think it was just sitting that that's out of any random place. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a great backdrop. I don't have journal entries from Charbs, but I hope this makes up for it. Um, and I also don't have great service. So I apologize if this cuts out, but I will be very brief. Um, and there's music, so apologies. But um, I just have to echo what everyone else has said. There is few people that have had such a positive impact on my life as Roger Boy has, both from a professional and a personal standpoint. And one of the amazing things about being in journalism is running into people and somehow Charbs comes up and the first name that, that is associated with that is Roger Boy. And Northwestern, the extended Charb family, it's incredible to know the impact that you've had on not just the Northwestern community, but the larger journalism industry. There's people throughout the country whose journalism career started at Cherubs and have gone on to win Pulitzer Prizes. Roger could list you all the awards and everything that they've done way better than I could. His memory is impeccable. Um, but I, I really just think there's no one better to be in inspiring and teaching the future generations of journalists every summer. And Roger, your commitment to this program and to the alumni network and just to the people around you is, is truly so inspiring and something that I hope, I know so many of us look up to it and wish to, to do it as well as you do. And I don't think uh, this program could run the way it does without your leadership and your dedication to it. And to me, there's nothing more important than every summer inspiring the next generation of people to pursue a career as noble as journalism. Um, and so thank you, thank you. I'm sorry that I, I don't have something more prepared or, or could speak for longer because this could go on uh, forever. But uh, every summer, the highlight for me is returning to Cherubs. Um, it's just so re-energizing to see a fresh group of students so excited. Um, and and it, it, every summer, I just hope, you know, I get that invite back to come because it, it really just reminds me of why I got into journalism. And, and, and why uh, why we all care so much about giving back because of what you've done for all of us. So thank you, Roger. Well, um, thank well. you, Mary Lou and everyone for setting this up. Uh, it's amazing to celebrate 50 years and hope there's there's way more to come. Well, thank you, Tyler. It's so so good to see you and, and, and having your input. You know, Tyler uh, took time away from his duties with Washington Post to speak to the students this summer. We called it, uh, uh, inside the Biden administration. It was a wonderful talk. And Tyler's done so much for the program and it's just been, uh, and Tyler, are you are you still, uh, can you still hear me? Yes, I can, I'm still here. Can, can you turn on your uh, video screen again, if possible? If not, that's okay. The only reason I, I ask is because, Okay, see, now move your, move, if you can, move it so we can see to the left of the woman in the, the woman in the painting. There's, right over her shoulder is a beefsteak, beefsteak begonia. So I think Cynthia mentioned beefsteak begonias and you can see it over her shoulder there at the far end. So I just, I, I had to point that out because it's not often you can see American Gothic. It's a sign, it was a sign, Roger. Um, Carlin McCarthy is a multi-hyphenate in digital video and film production. She is an incoming producer at NBC News Now. Previously, Carlin was an associate producer with ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir, where she was responsible for producing and editing stories for the number one network news program in the country. Carlin worked in BuzzFeed's production department where she assisted with, produ with production logistics for the company's flagship properties, including Worth It, The Try Guys, and Tasty. But Carlin says that the true top line item on her resume is teaching at Cherubs. Um, and after graduating from Adil in 2017, she has spent the past five summers teaching with the, uh, the program uh, where she says she has the honor of working alongside the program's fantastic staff and most importantly Roger Boy. So so Carlin I think you need to explain to us why you were never a chair but that's okay go ahead. <laughs> Roger you scooped me that's the start of the speech. Um, oh do you want to talk about my low high school GPA? That you no no oh no 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 no. <laughs> that was the alternate start to the speech but thank you for bringing it up. 
so I originally wrote a version of this that focused on the students of Cherubs and what Roger's work means to them. But then I had to admit something to myself. I hate to admit I was never actually a Cherub. You'd be forgiven if you thought I was since I made Loving the Program a real cornerstone of my adult personality. But that's because Roger has made it so easy to love. The first summer I taught and every summer since, Roger has invited me in, former chair of Bernat, and showed me that what I have to say to the students matters. He championed my changes to the broadcast curriculum, let me fill a closet and fits with very expensive video equipment, and even gave me the green light to decamp the whole operation to MFC, which honestly I think made him nervous. But Roger never said no. He gave me a thumbs up and a nod, which I chose to believe loosely translated to, yes, I trust you, go for it. And to have someone believe in you, the way Roger believes in me, believes in his staff, that's rare. But then again, someone like Roger is rare. Every year, no matter the obstacles, he builds a community out of printer ink and paper and the occasional finicky projector. He nurtures the seed of joy we have in teaching into a beefsteak begonia of possibilities. Each leaf, a branch of our confidence growing over the five weeks. He forges a family out of people from different generations and experiences, all uniting the belief that the future of journalism is worth investing in. And he, in the very act of keeping the program afloat, reminds the cherubs and us that we and the things we care about deserve to take up space on this planet. And we're so lucky because that space starts right there at 1845 Sheridan Road, learning from him. So Roger, thank you for helping the generations of students find themselves in between those walls. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for doing the same for me, even if I wasn't a cherub. Congratulations on your 50th anniversary. Here's to many more. And I'm already counting down the days till next summer. Well, well, thank you, Carlin. That's so nice of you to say. And every year I, I keep my fingers crossed and I hope she comes back, I hope she comes back. And you always manage to get the time off from, from your job. So I'm thinking, phew, ah, saved again. So, um, and all that equipment, of course we haven't used it this year or last year, but it's all still in safe storage. And of course, we're, I think we're still paying off the bills for all that equipment, but that's okay because that's what it makes the program all the better. So- uh, Well, next so, year we'll use it and it'll yeah, be worth it, trust that, me. That's, that's for sure. We got to get double, double use out of it next year to make up for lost time. So, well, it's so good to see you. It's only been six days now, so- Too I, long. Uh, well, that's for sure, too long. Well, thanks again, Carlin. And so, so good to see you. John Kupetz really needs no introduction. He's a lifelong journalism educator and John's first year as a cherub instructor with Roger was 1976. So John, take it away. Okay, and Roger, I was not a cherub and the answer is easy because I would have never been admitted. <laughs> every student well, we've had in this program is smarter than I am. I, I think that every year when I look at Northwestern's admission standards. I'm sure glad I'm not applying. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to look down. I wrote this out because I was so afraid I would mess this up, Roger, because this is maybe the most important thing I've ever said. Oh. So here we go. As someone who taught with Roger for more than half of the 50 years he devoted to this one of a kind program, I've had the privilege of observing someone who spent his life creating an environment in which people can succeed. We've heard from some of the wonderful students who have testified to what Roger has done for them because they were among the thousands of young journalists who have succeeded because of those special five weeks of Medill and the high school summer that changed their lives. I want to tell you that the environment Roger creates these five weeks at Medill where people can succeed also holds for his teachers. This program is education in its purest form. We teach without grades and Roger provides us with wonderful students who don't need grades for motivation. He then lets us teach with our heads and our hearts and respects the art of teaching because he too is a teacher and like us brings his own art to the classroom. Teaching in this program changes your life. You work for someone who wants you to succeed and whose dedication and worth ethic provides you with the example to follow as an educator. In steering this program for a half a century, Roger has adapted it along the way to address the changes and challenges that journalism faces. This program is much different than it was when I met Roger. I recall the typewriters from East Germany and then the word processors. I also recall Roger selling the East German typewriters at the Everson garage sale when we switched to the word processors. And he had one hell of a sales pitch. 
he sold every one of those things and those people thought they were walking away with gold for 25 dollars each erica I, brand I, I, I never forget that but rotating rewrites have never sounded the same since we gave up those typewriters mock production labs with dummy sheets gave way to a website created by students classes now include how to use social media as a reporting tool and there's a lab that has students writing tweets. However, Rogers made sure the program still maintains the core principles of journalism with its focus on writing and reporting and its belief in journalism is crucial to the self-writing process of democracy. The bonds you form with students and, and colleagues in this program last a lifetime. I'm still in touch with students from my first year of teaching with Roger. Brett Began, who now teaches with me and was my student when he went through this program was the first person who called me in 2004 when my mother died. Another student from this program, Sarah Newfield, flew from Baltimore to be with me through the yeah. funeral. This program is unique because of the wonderful students Roger brings to Medill and because of the environment he creates for these students and their teachers. We meet these students when they are just realizing how talented they are. And Roger provides them with a life-changing summer in which they become adults because they're treated like grown-ups. This program embodies what Albert Camus meant when he described finding within himself an invincible summer that would push back harder when the world pushed back against him. For 50 years, Roger has provided us all with an invincible summer. Roger, it has been an honor, a privilege, and a party to be part of this with you. At this time in history, what you're doing to help Medill and the cause of journalism has never been more important. May your next 50 years be the same. Well, thank you so much, John. That's very touching. And I, I, I know if there's anyone who should be, you know, considered the pillar of the program, it is you, because going back to 1976, and I don't, I don't, there may have been a couple of years you weren't involved with the program in the in the interim period, but almost all of them you've been a key part of the program. And every year, and I Evaluations are coming in from this summer. Everybody's saying, John Kupitz is wonderful. John Kupitz is wonderful. I'm going to go out and buy myself a whole whole slew of green pens so I can be like John. So, uh, I mean, your, your uh, input and your, uh, what you've done for the program has been monumental. And, you know, all of the people that, all of the cherubs who've been in the program owe so much to you. So I'm, I'm, very touched and, and, th and thank you so much. Thank you, Roger. You are the best. Well, so are you. And now, I, my name is Stacy Simpson and I'm the Associate Director of Special Events here at Medill and have the honor and pleasure of working with Roger during the entirety of the school year. Um, and we are, I'm here with Marjorie, who many of you know from the Chair Program. And we wanted to, she's, she's my Vanna White because it's a little bit bigger. <laughs> we have a, a keepsake box, Roger, that has been made for you. We know how much you like paper. And so people have submitted, many, many cherubs have submitted items uh, to the keepsake box. Those of you who sent digital greetings, I, I printed those out and they are also in here. And there are three-dimensional items. And inside the lid, it says, do what you love, and you'll do great work for 50 years. Congratulations. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Stacy, And th thank you, Marjorie. I, I thought you were going to say, knowing how much I love paper, I thought you were going to say, there's a shredding machine in here. <laughs> but, but no. <laughs> so, you know. Well, and we also... Um, you're, the Cherub community that we reached out to is aware, but we have an official Roger Boy bobblehead in the Medill collection now, and it is available for order from all of the, the people in Cherub land who would like oh. to order one. So wow. I, am, I am putting in the chat, um, those of you who got the Eventbrite invitation, there was a link in there that you can fill out a form to order a bobblehead. We'll wait till we get all the orders and then I'll be submitting those. So it'll be a few weeks before you get your very own. Oh, my but, goodness. Um, uh, everybody can have, have one up on their shelf, including you, Roger. This is your, your special 
custom one. I, I don't know. I'd be too frightened to put it on my shelf, but <laughs> so it's wow. It'll be looking right back at you. That's and so nice. So nice. We we also I've also put in the chat. Um, uh, if people have not submitted their information, we did reach out to try to update everybody's information so people can stay in touch and Nadil mm -hmm. can stay in touch with all of you. Oh, so great. Um, that'll be, if you haven't already submitted that to us, please do. We really want it. We really would keep the connections going. So Roger, would you like to say anything further to your well, classroom here? Well, it, I'm, I'm blown away by this. You know, I thought, Oh, I'll be meeting with Charles. That'll take about five minutes. And, you know, so, or Charles, that was, I didn't mean that the way it may have sounded, Charles. Um, <laughs> no offense taken, Roger. <laughs> so, but, uh, but I, I'm, I'm extremely uh, touched and I just, I, I'm, I'm virtually speechless. I, you know, and truth be told, uh, so many people, uh, if it were me, I think we would still be using typewriters in the chair program when it comes right down to it. And somebody years ago whispered in my ear and said, you know, Roger, I think those East German typewriters, maybe we should go and use word processors. So I got I pushed into that. And then from word processors, I got pushed into to, to uh, desktops and so forth. So, you know, if it wasn't for all of the great ideas and input and, and uh, uh, things that people would say and suggest over the years, uh, the program would be nowhere near where it is today. Uh, you know, we would we would still be in the dark ages in journalism. You know, using typewriters and uh, uh, and and no internet research, we'd be using a paper dictionary or something like that. So, you know, I I owe so much to everybody uh, uh, for you know for improving the program. You know, nudging things on keeping us abreast uh, with, with the changes in the industry and, and the journalism in general. So, um, you know, I'm just, I really am blown away. I, I just, I'm, all, I'm essentially speechless right now. So, um, and, and, I, and whoever were the catalyst of putting this on, I, I, you know, I really thank you from the bottom of my heart. So um, it, it, it could not have been better done. Thanks for everything, Roger. Well, thank you. You're the greatest. Thank you, everybody. Very well hey. deserved, Roger. We're, we're yeah. surprised we pulled it off. You're such a sleuth. We knew for sure that you were going to suss this out. No, it, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> one, it, total, it caught me by 100% total surprise. So you, you, you're to be congratulated for keeping a secret. So, so. And if uh, anyone has any further needs to get in touch with us, I think everybody, we will be, we've recorded this call, so we will be posting it to our, our YouTube channel and we'll share the link with everyone who registered through Eventbrite. And we will also, the video, as soon as we get it finalized, because video submissions just keep on coming in, um, we will be putting those videos together. Matt Schrock from our awesome IT team is uh, yeah. doing that for us. And Roger, that'll be our final gift to you. Oh. You'll be hearing from people who couldn't make it today on the call oh. and some people who could, but um, oh. we'll have that all ready for you. And again, oh. we'll share that on our, our Medill YouTube page and send the link out for everybody oh. to enjoy. So, so nice. So wonderful. Stacy. So Oh, we've yes. had so many people uh, direct message me if they could um, say a few words. So can we can we possibly have people who want to say anything, raise their hands and then have maybe Marjorie call on them like we do in class, chair of class? Oh, of course. <laughs> That'd be great. Jenny? Hi, Jenny? Roger. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yep. I just wanted to say I also, like Carlin, never got to be a cherub. Um, but Roger was nice enough to hire me first in 2002 and for the next, I guess, seven or eight years. And if not for cherubs, you know, cherubs didn't only change my career, but it changed <laughs> my life. I wouldn't have met my husband, Victor, who is my co-instructor, and we wouldn't have had our kid, Max. So cherubs absolutely probably had the largest impact on, on my life of anything. And... I was, after taking a decade off uh, with my son, Max, I got to come back this year online, which was 
a lot more fun than I expected. And it just reminded me how amazing it is to work with these students and with these instructors and with you, Roger, and what a privilege it is and how it renews my faith in journalism and in teaching all of it. You know, it's, it's just absolutely a unique experience that is, has been the most fun of, of the experiences of my entire life. So I just wanted to thank you for everything. And I know I'm not the only one, my classmate, Charlotte Snow and her husband Chip Rowe met and fell in love through Cherubs and it changed their lives too. So right, Cherub right. love. Right. <laughs> Thank you for well, having well, me. Well, Jenny, so good to see you. And I know we've exchanged, I uh, got copies of emails from you today, so, and you were able to keep this a secret, so. so. <laughs> I tried hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Roger. Well, so good to see you. A Emily Botham. Hi, Roger. It's Emily Bauckham, chair of class of 2003. 2003? Oh, yes. no. The, the summer that Jenny and Victor met and Mary Lou's first summer, she was my instructor. And I'm in the NBC San Antonio affiliate newsroom because wow. of you. Wow. And I just wanted to say, I wrote this in the chat, but I'm sure you're overwhelmed and can't look at the chat. I'm grateful how much you love paper because the summer before I was eligible, I wrote you a letter back when that was a concept and said, please think of me next summer. And you did. You remembered and you mailed me the application. And because of that, it put me on a path to pursue TV journalism. So thank you. It, it, as an adult, I realized how many people that would have just slipped their minds, how easy it would have been to think, oh, that kid from who wrote me, but you didn't let it slip your mind. And I thank you for it. Well, if you could see my office, I probably still have that letter on file. <laughs> well, I so. remember when I came to homecoming a few years ago, you um, said, I look at your photo every day and you had everyone's chair of class photo framed on the wall. And uh, I just thought that was so cool. So Emily, I have to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Did you know that there was anything going on between Jenny and Victor? I didn't. Oh, we all did. Yes. You all did. <laughs> we all did. No way. We I, yes. It was horribly I, kept secret that summer. I'm. I, I think I was the last to know. <laughs> well, you were so, a little busy. You you kind of no, had like well, 88 kids, teenagers no, no. to to handle. So no. it's okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, thank you for letting me off the hook. Of course. <laughs> Next up is Amy Kasav Smith. Okay, hi. Hi, Roger. Hi, hi Amy. Good to see you. You too. You too. Okay, I did write you a quick little toast here. Um, so I was a chair of an 84 and a Medill grad in 89. And I had Roger for basic writing, but there is truly nothing basic about him, as everybody has said so eloquently today. I think if you look up the word gracious in the dictionary, you really should see Roger's picture right next to it. Even today, Roger, you are the epitome of gracious. You always make everyone in your life that you speak with, that you see, feel seen, appreciated, capable, and important to you. And honestly, that is such a gift. We had the honor of working together at Medill and also in the last few years at a professional development event for journalism educators. And I can say without a doubt that the Cherubs and Medill definitely changed my professional life. My journalism roots have brought me more joy than I could put into words. And I really wanna thank you. Oh. You're an amazing person and a gift to Medill, to the journalism world, and your friendship is a gift to me. So thank you so much for everything. Well, well thank you, Amy. That's, that's so good of you to say. And, and um, I, I want you to know I have a little talk I give on the history of Medill because this is our 50th year and you are part of it <laughs> because uh, you, I don't know how many people here know Amy uh, was the national writing champion in the Hearst, uh, William Randolph Hearst competition, you know, multi-tier competition, went out to San Francisco, won first place. And we had a little party for you after, <laughs> after you got back to campus. And there's a wonderful picture I use in the history talk of you standing next to uh, to, to signs that say congratulations, Amy. So, Thank so you. you're you're you are memorialized in the in the history talk. <laughs> so well, it's great to see you. Great to see you. Yes. Thank you so much. Emma Manley. 
Hi, I'm so nervous. I never thought I'd be raising my hand in the Medill chair of the Zoom call again. Um, but I actually want to talk a little bit about, nervous to you, about nervousness with you because you've made me so comfortable when I feel nervous. Um, first, when I emailed you about my application um, like three months ago, and we struck up a conversation about Robert Manley, who I did not know. And unfortunately, he's not related to me. But he sounds like a really cool guy. And then um, you sent the email saying, and like, tell me if you have a pet. And I'm like, I'm nervous to say that I don't have any pets. I only have a cucumber plant. Um, <laughs> a conversation about growing plants. Um, and then when you emailed me um, saying like, let's meet in a Zoom call um, before class, that made me nervous too. But you have been the sweetest person. And I'm so thankful for letting, for you letting me into Cherubs. Um, it's been the best summer of my life. The other day, I like woke up at 5 a.m. and started writing my Why Northwestern letter um, or supplemental essay because this has just been the best summer of my life. I already know it, even though I'm 17. So thank well, you. Well, well Emma, it was, it was great having you in the program this summer. And I guess to say it's the best summer of your life when you're 17, you know, maybe a few more summers from now, maybe you'll change your opinion. But, uh, and, and uh, Robert Man Manley, by the way, was a uh, distinguished uh, Nebraska historian. And since I'm from Nebraska, uh, and I, 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 got, I met and got to know Dr. Manley a little bit when I was in college. So, so when I saw your applications, the first thing I had to ask you if you were related. So, so, so good to see you. It's only been Lindsay? six days. <laughs> Lindsay? Hi, Roger. Um, I just wanted to say as another non-cherub, but um, continuously attached to the cherub program, um, thank you so much for everything that you've built. Um, echoing everyone else, coming back every summer reminds me of why I do the work I do. And it always inspires me because of the caliber of students that you bring in. Um, and I've just always appreciated and um, just been so grateful for how you bring people in and how you sort of like make them feel welcome and like from inviting our dorm over for Thanksgiving to just always being there and um, I also have the rare ability to show you um, wow, look one at of your <laughs> Christmas cactuses that is um, come with me from from Chicago and also various apartments in Brooklyn and um, I have a bunch of them throughout <laughs> the apartment so it's it's a nice to always be able to see it blooming and uh, think of think of what you've done for for me and for everyone in this community so thank you so much Roger and congratulations well, well well thank you Lindsay and that's a very healthy looking Christmas cactus I will have to say congratulations and and uh, even though you weren't a cherub, you were a stalwart of CRC while you were in school. And, and you keep coming back during the summers to, to uh, teach our audio classes, which are, as we all know, increasingly important in journalism. I don't know what we would do without you literally because so many students say, I want to do podcasting. I want to do podcasting. And our answer is we have Lindsay, there she is. So, well, thank you, Lindsay. Jonathan Shelley. Well, that was the perfect setup. You kind of stole my thunder. I was going to weigh in on behalf of the CRC contingent and say for all I appreciate for Roger's great work with the uh, High School Institute for Journalism of the Cherubs, which was a phenomenal experience. I had the privilege of also being um, uh, the beneficiary of his earlier efforts, I think, with uh, CRC. And on behalf of uh, everything that uh, everyone that benefited from that, I wanted to salute you as well and, uh, and wish you 50 more great years uh, in, uh, in, in, with the Cherubs and, uh, and with everything else that you do, Roger. So thanks for everything. Well, thank you, Jonathan. And it's sort of like a transition going from Lindsay to you, CRC to CRC. So, well, it's great to see you and I hope you've been doing well because it's, been, been, it's been a few years since I, I, our paths have crossed. So, in a few years, ironically, I was just in Chicago uh, this past weekend for the first time in oh, two years. Wow. But uh, we'll hopefully make it up and, and see you at some point. And uh, until then, uh, you know, keep on trucking, man. Great. Do that. I'll, let, I'll give you the, the nickel tour of campus. I'll even give you the dime tour of campus. I don't recognize it anymore. I know. I don't either. I, I get lost on North Campus, but that's another story. So <laughs> great to see you. Barbara. Barbara Goodman. 
Oh, Barbara. Rod, sure. Hey, Barbara, how are you? Hey. This takes us back. Or maybe we should keep the year under, under wraps here. <laughs> well, we go back 49 of your 50 years. And I have, I can also say that my chair of summer was one of the best of my life. Now, as I know, I've told you many, many times, um, despite the fact that I did not go on to Medill, nor did I go on to become a journalist, you still trusted me. Um, you brought me in for a couple of summers to be the office manager. And then I could not believe my, uh, my good fortune when you asked me to then be a counselor for a couple of years and uh, take out my, re my red pen. I remember you telling me that you thought I had been there for so many summers that I, that I had to hang enough of the hang of it to know what I would be doing. <laughs> um, and then you brought me in for years when I uh, would come in and as a librarian, talk about research tools right. Right. for journalists. Um, I could also count on you, who was one of the people, somebody who was probably the best memory of anybody I know, to remind me exactly what year my father was a journalism chair and what year my brother was a journalism chair. Uh, so I appreciate that. I appreciate the when Medill opened their new broadcasting studio, you inviting me and my kids to come over and see it. Um, I am, I have for years been blown away with all the extraordinary influence you've had on so many people. And I am honored and touched with how you have changed my life and so many others. And I thank you for, for well, it all. That's, that's so nice of you to say, Barbara. I mean, uh, you're practically a lifelong Evanston resident, so our paths cross rather frequently. And um, it's, always, it's always so much fun to see you and, and getting to know your family. And as I, if I recall correctly, I think I was at your wedding. Uh, so we, we go back uh, in a lot of ways a, a long time. And, uh, and, and I and believe the last time I saw you was indeed at the 4th of July parade the last time there was one in person. So 2019, I remember chasing, that. Chasing around all the, all, the, uh, all the cherubs who were, who were covering it, so. Yep. Yeah, I was up on, uh, I was up on the uh, west end of the parade route because panic cherubs had come up. So I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna be doing. I tried to give them some ideas. I said, well, right over there is the mayor of Evanston. Maybe we want to go talk uh, to the mayor. And, oh, oh, great, I didn't know that, so, but. Uh, but anyway, is your, is your, how's your new home working out? Very well. And I'm but, very close to you now. So I, we great. will. We'll have to get together. We will get together. Very it's good. great very to good. see you and congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you again. Katie Prentice. Hi, Roger. Hey, Katie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm oh, hanging in there. Good. I just wanted to say a quick congratulations as well and to thank you for giving me the opportunity to not only be a cherub but also like Brett said the trifecta of CA and instructor and not only all of that the three best summers of my life but you helped me get my first internship in journalism when you introduced me to Anna de Blantes, who was at WFLD and I was lost and didn't really know what type of internship I wanted to do. And that really sort of set me on my path. And you also gave me this beautiful card that has this <laughs> painting of Fisk on it. And um, I have debated every single year, I seem to move every year and have to collect my belongings. And I debate every year framing it because it's just so beautiful. But my fear of framing it is that I wouldn't be able to read the message inside, which is so special to me. Like other people have said, you just make people feel so capable and so um, successful. And I just cherish the message that you wrote to me after being an instructor. So I, it, will, it will forever be preserved in paper form so that I can keep the message. Um, so thank you. Well, paper, I can relate to that. Well. <laughs> Well, Katie, I, I can't believe you kept that card. So I, I'm really blown away by that. And I have to say, um, after your cherub year, after your uh, uh, CA year, and after your instructor year, people would say to me, 
Katie Prentice. She is one of the genuinely nicest people I've ever gotten to know and to meet. So, and that's what I tell people about Katie. She is just one of the very nicest people you could ever want to know. And, and you're still the same way. So I'm, yeah. it's, it's just so good to see you. I mean. It's and, good to see you too. I'll stop uh, by uh, campus sometime when it's open and ready for outsiders right. again. That's right, <laughs> when it's, when it's health, healthy to do so. so yeah, absolutely. Well, well. Well, thank you so much, Katie. Yeah. Yeah. Marshall Cohen. Oh, Marshall. Hey, guys. <clears throat> hey, Roger. How are you? Good, good. Great to see you, Marshall. How are hey, you, Ben? You too. I'm doing good. Calling in from Washington, D.C., home of the uh, infamous insurrection. <laughs> but um, I, I just want to, I didn't want to drag this out super long, but I just wanted to give another representative from CRC and to join Allison as a representative of 2009. I was looking through some of my old files on my computer lately. I was moving out of my parents' house, found an old email from Roger Boy, subject line, CDC guidelines. And it was all about the pandemic. H1N1 swine flu in 2009. Yeah. And um, little did we know that that would have, it was just a tiny blip to the real deal, but you've actually shepherded the program through two global pandemics. <laughs> um, but you've, you've changed so many people's lives. I wouldn't be here without you, without all the amazing instructors that are on this call right now. And um, it's just, it's amazing what can, what can happen in five weeks. And you taught us how to be journalists, but also you taught us how to be teachers for our, for the, for when we get that opportunity. And, you know, I've got interns now and I try to give them some of the same writing workshops that, that you put us through on starting on day one. And it's, um, it's all part of, part of the family. I feel like we're all, we're all your kids and you, you know, you have so much to be proud of and we have so much to be grateful for. Well, so God bless you, Roger. Well, it's so nice. And it's sort of like the, the, cherub, the cherub traditions get handed down uh, through, through the years. So yeah, I remember H1N1 pretty well. We had a whole set of meetings about what we're gonna do about H1N1. And one of the results was the university put up some, some, some of these hand sanitizers in various buildings, including in the lobby of Fisk. Well, it was in 2017, 2018, there was no sanitizer in the hand sanitizer, you know, dispensary. And I thought, you know, they got this here and not, they don't use it. But that changed radically in March of, uh, of a year ago. Uh, all of a sudden, the hand sanitizer dispenser got filled with hand sanitizer. So it's like you came around to pandemic too. So, well, Marshall, it's, it's great to see you in it. And it sounds like you you have a very successful career in journalism, which is, which is what it's all about. And I, you know, that's, that's, that, I think that's the most gratifying part seeing, and I'm sure this is true for Charles and, and other youngsters on the, on the faculty to be able to see uh, students go on to such success. So that's what started here. It started that's what, right what here. it's all about. Well, great. Well, thank you for, for joining us today. So, and like I've been saying, I'm very touched. Very, what, what an afternoon. So, well. Well, Roger, I think, I think we'll wrap it up there. Again, okay. for everybody, if you wanna still send a greeting to us, please do so. You can send a, a, a written, written message or a video message, and we'll be sure to include those in our final wrap-up gift for Roger. And um, it was terrific to see so many people want to join. To Roger, we had over 200 people register for the Zoom uh, call, and that's wow. a, that's record-breaking. So that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. You well, are thank well you. well loved and revered. So well, well, thank you so much, and thank you for putting all of this together because I know something like this just doesn't happen by accident. <laughs> so, so thank you, Stacy. There are lots of folks well, involved. Well, so. well, yeah, well, thank you everybody who was involved. So, and, and good luck everybody. And, and like I say, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just blown away and so thankful for this. So we'll have to all keep in touch. Yeah. Thanks Roger. Thank you everyone. Love you. Bye everybody. Bye-bye.
everybody. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. Roger, we're gonna we're gonna um, send you the chat file. Oh, so thank that, you, thank you. Because there were so many messages in the chat to you, oh, so wow. we want you to be able to to scroll through those. And any day you need to pick me up, you just reread right. them over and right. over again. Right. I'll, I'll do that. And, okay. And, and Stacy and, and Marjorie, yeah. Marjorie, wait, I owe you one. <laughs> We've been working very hard. Roger, we've been talking about this since the summer of 2019. Wow. wow. <laughs> and in fact, um, you will see in your um, video some photographs that, that hang on the wall of your office. <laughs> that I actually, thanks to Charles, he let me into your office and I took those off the wall and scanned them. Wow, wow. And it all began that summer and we thought it was going to be a live celebration for you in 2020. Yeah. And we and we had to postpone. And we thought maybe we'd get to do a live celebration for you this year. <laughs> but well, it ultimately came together. So of course, and the way things are going with this Delta variant, who, variant, who knows what's going to happen next year. I mean, so yeah. it's yeah. just pretty pretty sorry but state, I think so. in, in a way this was even better because so many more people could be no, here for that's you true, that's true and no. you know we reached that we were able to reach so many others with the, no. with no. the call so no. No. Okay. congratulations well, I hope you're well, feeling all the love I, I sure am I sure am oh help boy I can't take it anymore <laughs> so <laughs> so you were hoping you went to the bathroom what's that <laughs> we're like oh I hope you went to the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> and i will i will coordinate with you to get the box to you I'm, i have it here at the office and i'll make sure you get it soon. that's great that's good very good well okay everybody well i'm going to sign off and with with a deep deeply felt appreciation and thanks so you're welcome what a, what a wonderful bye bye, bye.